everybody! I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about blood transfusion reactions. So, let's get into it. The first thing I wanted to point out is reactions can vary. So you can have a very mild reaction or you could have a life-threatening one. And reaction onset can also vary. So you can have a reaction during the transfusion itself or even several days after. Most people who have a transfusion reaction will have a mild one and it will happen during the transfusion itself, which is a good thing because we can monitor them and we'll be able to treat it right away. The main causes of transfusion reactions, there is a mismatch of blood or an incompatibility of blood. This causes an immunological response. So the patient's body is trying to fight off this blood because it sees it as like a foreign invader. Or the blood itself is contaminated. There's something in the blood like a bacterial infection or a disease. Um, so that's causing the donor to get sick. And that is a non-immunological response. Now, with these two things, we want to make sure that we remember that blood transfusions in general are very, very safe. They have to go through lots of checks and balances to prevent this sort of thing from happening. So I don't want you to be like afraid, like, oh my God, what if it's contaminated? Very, very likely it will not be. Lots and lots of protocols to make sure that the blood that we give our patients is safe to give them. But these would be the two main reasons why they could have a reaction. And reactions can vary. So let's talk about some of the different types of reactions, starting with the mild. So a mild allergic reaction is simply a hypersensitivity to that donated blood. Signs and symptoms include things like rashes or hives, and treatment can be something as simple as antihistamines. Another kind is the febrile non-hemolytic. This is actually the most common type of blood transfusion reaction we see, and it's caused by cytokines in the donor's white blood cells. This can happen during the transfusion or even up to four hours after the transfusion has stopped. The most common signs and symptoms are going to be fever and chills, hence the name, febrile, and the most common treatment, antipyretics. It's actually pretty standard in a lot of places that if your patient is going to have a blood transfusion, they will order like an acetaminophen just in case they have a febrile reaction. And another kind, the worst kind, is the anaphylactic. Of course, that's very, very severe allergic reaction. Um, that can cause tachycardia, edema everywhere, uh, bronchospasm, so they're having a hard time breathing, and then severe hypotension. So this, when we talk about, oh, mild to life-threatening, that's what we mean. So this is our mild, this is our kind of common, and this is our most life-threatening one, is anaphylactic. A few more acute transfusion reactions your patient might experience. Septic, so that's going to be caused by contaminated blood product, right? So there's bacteria in that blood product that they've been receiving. So they're going to have those symptoms, those symptoms of sepsis, things like a high fever, hypotension, tachycardia, and then treatment is going to be with IV fluids and antibiotics. An acute hemolytic reaction, this is when the recipient's antibodies attack that donated blood. The red blood cells could have been damaged. That's another reason. So um, typically this is going to occur for this reason because the antibodies are attacking. The other reason could be because that blood that we got from the blood bank is contaminated or not good for some reason. It could be something as simple as it got too hot. Okay, so when you get blood from the blood bank, it's very cold and you have a half an hour to start that blood and it has four hours to transfuse. You have to get it in in that uh, time frame. And there's a reason for that because we don't want it to get too warm. So this could also be caused by that blood somehow getting too warm. So the signs and symptoms are going to include things like fever, flank pain, which is that side pain, uh, red or brown urine, and hypotension. Then we have some special ones. We have taco and trial. <laughs> So TACO is transfusion-associated circulatory overload. 
So this is when the blood transfusion causes hypervolemia. So there's too much blood volume in the patient's body. So when that happens, the heart has to work harder. And when the heart is doing that, fluid can build up in the lungs. Some signs and symptoms, tachycardia, which makes sense, right, because their heart is working harder. Uh, shortness of breath, hypertension, and jugular venous distension. So you'll see those bulging veins in the neck. And treatment for this, obviously we're gonna stop the transfusion because they don't need it, it's too much, and likely we'll have to give something like diuretics. And that other kind of random one, the trial one. So this is transfusion-related acute lung injury. So the donor plasma contains antibodies that cause damage to the immune cells in the patient's lungs. So this can, kind of in a similar way, bring more fluid into the lungs so the patient has a harder time breathing. This can occur within the six hours of the transfusion. So it can occur during the transfusion or up to six hours after. And some signs and symptoms these patients might exhibit. Shortness of breath, fever, and hypotension. There are many types of acute transfusion reactions, and I know keeping it all straight can be a little confusing. So a helpful tool, so you can memorize them, is a silly funny nurse hemolyzed my lab count. So A is for allergic, S is for septic, F is febrile, N is non-hemolytic, H is hemolytic, L is for that lung injury, and then C is for that circulatory overload, that taco one. So this is just a helpful tool so you can remember all of the different types of blood transfusion reactions. When it comes to treating these reactions, there's standard treatment and then specific treatment based on the type of reaction. So for example, we talked about some of those. If it's a mild allergic, we might give antihistamines. If it's a febrile, we will give antipyretics. So those are more specific to the type. What I want to talk about now is the standard. So any type of reaction, these are the things the nurse is going to do first, okay? So the very, very first thing you're gonna do is stop that transfusion, right? Because it's causing the problems. So we're gonna stop giving them that blood. Then we're gonna start normal saline with new tubing. Remember, when we give a blood transfusion, we have that Y tubing, and one part is in the blood, and one part is in that normal saline. You're not going to start that normal saline with that Y tubing that the blood's been going in, because that is now contaminated. So you need to get new tubing with your normal saline and start that right away. You're going to examine the blood products. So you're going to look at the bag and make sure there wasn't some sort of mistake. Is this the wrong patient? Is this the wrong type of blood? Was the time wrong? You know, what's, is there anything we could have missed? So examining that blood bag. Of course, you're going to take vital signs, right? Signs and symptoms that the patient might be experiencing. You're going to assess your patient. Vital signs are going to be done every 15 minutes until they're stable. Um, we're going to draw some blood from the patient and send that down to lab so it can get analyzed. We're also going to send the bad blood, right, the blood that caused the problem, and the tubing down as well because they're going to do further checks in the blood bank. They want to make sure that nothing happened, there wasn't a mistake, something they could avoid in the future. So we need to send all that stuff down to them so they can look at it too. Of course, we're going to call the doctor, right? They need to know that the patient is having a reaction. Um, and call the blood bank to let them know. And then usually, along with that blood draw, doctor is often going to order a UA because they're looking for blood in that urine to see if it was a hemolytic reaction. So all of these things you're going to do first, and then you're going to do those extra stuff depending on what type of reaction they're having. So the antihistamines, controlling the blood pressure, doing the diuretics, doing the antipyretics, whatever kind of reaction they're having. But all of them, you do this first. So blood transfusion reactions, they can be kind of scary, but as I said in the beginning, most of them are mild, they occur very early on during the transfusion process, we can treat them right away. And in general, Getting blood is very, very safe, and reactions are very, very rare. And that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.